Convening to order, if everybody could take your seats. If we could have roll call. Mayor Campbell. Here. Vice Mayor Samaglia. Here. Commissioner Vignola. Is here. Commissioner Daly. Here. Commissioner Carter. Present. City Manager Goodrum. Here. City Attorney Hearn. Here. Folks, if we could take a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, we have tonight Shana Gutman, who is a first grader at Hebrew Academy Community School, and she's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shana, don't go too far. <laughs> Was that adorable? That's a We have a t-shirt. I believe so. I pledge at the City Commission meeting in Coral Springs, Florida. Oh, Before we get started with the meeting, um, a number of the commissioners were present this week when we had the realtors talk about this new sign ordinance. I have some ideas that I have not been able to express that might solve the problem. Uh, so I don't think it's ripe tonight for discussion, and I'm gonna ask the commission to put it off till November 21st. And between, November, between now and November 21st, what I'd like to do is have a workshop so that we come up with a product that hopefully everybody can live with. Uh, it's an important issue. Uh, it's an issue that I think uh, the realtors, our citizens, deserve some time to give us the input that I think we need. So I'm going to be asking the commission to, uh, to delay it, not table it, till the November 21st meeting. Mr. Mayor, I would move uh, to delay uh, Ordinance 2018-107 to a date certain of November 21st, 2018. I'll second. Commissioner Vignola. My concern is that we have two elections coming up, and our side ordinance um, needs to be changed before that, or we can find ourselves in legal trouble. Well, um, November's kind of late. I'd much rather do it much sooner. I understand pushing it off, and I'm okay with that. However, I think going till November and after that election leaves us open to litigation. Well, I visited that with our legal staff. There is no urgency. Uh, we are not getting sued. Uh, if someone does sue us, then we'll have to move it up. Uh, but right now, I have not heard of anybody who's suing the city of Coral Springs for a sign ordinance that has been before the Supreme Court for what, for two years now? Three. Mr. Hearn? Uh, I believe two and a half, three years, yeah. Uh, so th that's going to be, I heard a motion seconded by Vice Mayor. I have a question regarding yes. Commissioner Bignola's comments and concerns about the election signs, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, so the ordinance that's currently in place, right, has been effective, right? With that issue, you're saying because of the way that federally has been changed. 
Well, I, yeah, and I think that could, we were open to that, could have been an issue in the 2016 election. Um, I think leaving us open, and, and my conversation with staff is that would be kind of an issue. I have no problem pushing it off. I just think that maybe we could do it before November. We have plenty of time to work with the community and stuff before that. I just, you know, maybe we come back to it in September. Maybe we come back to it at the end of August. I mean, maybe we have a workshop in August and come back to it in September. But I the, think going to no late November like that is... The, the, problem, the problem we have, Commissioner Vignola, is September is our budget. So we can't do it then. Uh, and I want to have enough time that we get all the input. I mean, I was here the other day, and this auditorium was packed. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of input. Uh, on this issue, and it's an important issue. We have to comply with the Supreme Court ruling, but yet we have people that rely upon these signs for their job and for money that they get. It's, it's their future. Uh, so I'm asking, and we have a motion. It's been seconded. Any further discussion? Yes. yes. One, we can't do November 21st. The well, meeting's set for the 28th. Well, then. Um, well, I just want to make that clear now. Yeah, no, we, we should have the correct date. That, that's... Is it 28th? The clerk? The 21st, the day before Thanksgiving. That's School's out that what, day, what, what, so I guess it was yeah, we're off looking our up, calendar. The clerk's looking up right now just to confirm what day that would be. Right, yeah, right now we have an advertised uh, sign ordinance, so we also would have a zoning in progress, which will help protect us with litigation as we move forward. And if we do need to move it quicker, um, I would definitely come back to you. I just, if we, I, if we were to workshop it next month and then come back in September, or even the first meeting in October, I think that gives us plenty of time to figure out the solutions on this and pushing it off. First meeting in Again, October is typically not a meeting that we have people come comment. We can switch that to an evening meeting, or we can do it in the second meeting in October. I, I think we can do this in September. This is something that we've workshopped repeatedly. It, it's fine, but there's retreats. been a motion made. What's the date? Mr. M Mr. Mayor, yes. my concern about moving it down the road is that we had the meeting with staff. And we had a number of these people show up and express their concerns and, and give us the reasons why we needed to make favorable changes. I mean, if I thought moving forward tonight would be beneficial to us in, I, I don't approve of staff's recommendation the way it's written. That's what I want that's, to yeah, get a fine, but do we need to product get to my question. that hopefully we can all agree upon, including the reality. Realtors community. Right. It's been moved for the date in November, whatever the that 28th. date. So I'll move it to November 28th, Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk, do we have the date? Is that the date? Correct. Okay. So it's moved till November 22nd. And I'm asking staff to put together a workshop so we can do all the issues. So the, the, the signed ordinance, the, the way it is currently written, is status quo. It's going to be the status quo. And, so, and just to clarify, it's November 28th that is the motion. And just to clarify, I'm okay with moving it. I just think that going till almost December is a little too far. I, I've heard your comment, and there's a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay, passes four to one. So I'm asking folks out there, if you did come tonight to talk on that ordinance, uh, it's really not the night we want to talk about the ordinance. I really want to get a workshop together and I want to make sure that everybody has input on this issue. Including the realtors. Everybody. I mean, it was clear to me the other day that we have to come up with a solution. And I think all these folks agree to that. But I want their input and I do have some ideas that I think might uh, be a solution to the entire problem. Uh, but again, I have to push, I have to Research it a little bit further. I don't feel confident putting it on the table yet. And I've asked our legal counsel to work with me on that. So let's move on. Is there anybody who wants to make any type of public comment tonight? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mira, I do have one question. Okay. Yeah, Carlos Fernay, um, 10840 West Sample Road, um, apartment 3403. Uh, that's V E R N E Y um, for the captioners. V E V E R N E Y. Um, since we're on the subject of housing, um, I just wanted to bring to the commission's attention and for staff the issue of affordable housing. It's an important issue. It's an important issue for me. Um, it's an important issue, I think, for residents. It's an important issue that goes back for many years, um, and it's an issue that needs to be addressed. 
And because if it doesn't get addressed, then we're going to have a brain drain and we're going to have young professionals leaving the city that they've come to know. This city used to be a community of excellence. Um, it is now a, everything under the sun, but to me it's still, this community is a community of excellence. It's not because of the awards that the city uh, has received, it's because of the people who live in the city. And if the, fit, and the cities, citizens and residents of this city can't afford to live here, or the rent or the housing keeps increasing, then it's the livelihoods of the residents of Coral Springs. Today, tonight, um, I guess we're postponing a sign ordinance and we're talking about the livelihoods of the realtors and the real estate agents who help people find housing. But really, when it comes down to it, um, it's really up to the policy uh, facilitators and the policy makers to really get together and collaborate and address the issues for this community so that they can move forward. And that's why I'm here, because it's uh, personal to me. Um, it might be personal to other people in the audience, and it's time that this city um, really dedicates some time and vision to move the city in the right direction and focus on affordable housing, not just for uh, people in this room, but for people in the, in the city who have come to know in this city as a community of excellence. And if we're gonna really be that community of excellence and gonna be really everything under the sun, then we really need to focus on affordable housing. And we need people to step up and to take a seat at the table and to join those committees and really get down to work. And that's really why I'm here, to address that issue of affordable housing, to really kind of have staff really kind of look at people in the community and see if they can actually find people. And if they can't, then you know what? There's people in this audience right here that can actually take those seats and address those issues. Um, there's real estate agents and people who find housing for other people in this audience. And if those people can know of people who want to sit down and uh, be a part of those committees, then we can tackle this issue. But I'm looking at uh, five elected officials, staff members, city attorney, city clerk, and the city manager. And it's time for the city to really focus on affordable housing. Um, so. Um, if we don't, then I think we're losing the potential of talented young professionals, um, the senior citizens, and just talented professionals in this city that want to stay in this city but are having a hard time affording. So that's my three minutes, and um, I ask that the City Commission please take a look at this as a long-term issue. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I do have one signed speaker, Justin Huffman. Welcome, Justin. Uh, my name is Justin Huffman. Uh, my address is 8401 West Sample Road, Coral Springs, Florida. Um, our car was recently involved in a police shooting here in Coral Springs on 530. Um, the police had shot out our car, our vehicle. I met with the mayor, Skip, and the assistant city attorney. Um, I reached out for help to see if there's anything we could do, and the city stated sovereign immunity that they would not take care of our vehicle, they would not help us with our vehicle, even though the police had shot our vehicle out. Um, even though the vehicle was shot, um, we paid for the windows to get fixed, but when they recovered the uh, projectile, the bullet from my car, they actually had to rip a car, the par a car apart the car to get the, the bullet out of the car. So when I came to the mayor and, I, and I, I, I came to risk management, they denied it, saying, hey, it is what it is, Sovereign immunity, we're not responsible for, your, for, for us shooting your car. So I've really reached out, you know, we're a family, uh, four children. We reached out and said, hey, listen, this is not right that we should have to pay for this. The city attorney, assistant city attorney, uh, issued a, a statement of giving me a case in Miami where a child was shot in the eye, or actually the child was shot, uh, the glass flew in his eye, and they were not responsible for that. So when they gave that to me, stating that they weren't responsible for that, and saying that this case was different from this case, when this child was shot with this, we were just saying our car has been ripped apart, the police shot our vehicle, and we were asking for any type of help to get that taken care of. And the only th answer we got was, you have insurance and that's what it's for. So that's why I'm here. Um, I also received a letter stating that I wasn't able to speak to any city officials. The letter I received from the city attorney stating that they would well, only Who gave you that letter out of curiosity? This is uh, assistant city attorney. Uh, that is Andrew? totally incorrect, and hopefully it's false. Because as you know, I, I personally think you should be reimbursed. Um, 
and I personally think that it's the wrong policy, public policy. Uh, did anybody say that he couldn't talk to us? Mayor, in order to, and you know this, to be able to speak on, on the vehicle, you need to be an owner of the vehicle. This gentleman is not an owner of the vehicle, he's not an attorney, and he has not a power attorney for the person who owns the vehicle. We absolutely cannot be dealing with that. We let the, the, the woman that owns the vehicle know that. Correct, and she actually wrote you back stating that I can, you know, give full power on this vehicle in writing, stating that we can give me the authority to speak on our vehicle, which the police contacted me when the vehicle was shot. They contacted me, they dealt with me the whole time. The mayor spoke with me directly. Only when I started asking questions did you say, we will no longer deal with you. I, I appreciate what you're saying. When you came, you said you were the owner of the vehicle. Never, I've never said I was the owner of the vehicle. You said you were the owner of the vehicle. Second, an I email. That a, again, a, sir, I've never stated I was the owner of the vehicle. If I may, I've always stated. Well, always an email does not give. An I'm email not, does not I'm give not, authority. I'm not going to get into a yeah. pissing contest tonight. Uh, you got an issue. I think the whole commission should know about the issue, and this is the appropriate place to talk about it. And the rest of the commission can decide uh, how we're going to I mean, proceed. I just feel it's, it's very wrong of, you know, when, when our vehicle, we weren't involved in the police shooting, we had nothing to do with that, and when they took apart my car and ripped it apart because they were looking for a projectile, and they tell me that that's what it is, I feel that's wrong. And when I went to the, when I, when, when they CC'd the city attorney, assistant city attorney, CC'd the police chief, CC'd the mayor, stating to no longer talk to me regarding this, I feel that's wrong. I feel that if you're saying you cannot talk to any city official, what, what are you hiding to tell me of, of, a, of a car that got shot out that I cannot talk to a city official about this? All right. Okay. That's all Thank I want you. to talk about. Thank you. Mayor, it's important that I address this now. Okay, go ahead. I understand his frustration. I truly do. We, as a city, can only reimburse people for things that are owed under the law. There's a long line of case law, and, and it, the reason why that is is when you're taking emergency action, there can be a tremendous amount of damage. And what the law says is that you don't want municipalities to be timid in their actions, knowing that there's that liability. The Florida League of Cities is our insurance company. It's not covered on the insurance company because it's not owed. And so I do appreciate it. I truly do. Um, but the reason why uh, the individual was told not to, and I... Uh, was told, I didn't write the letter, but I'm aware of it, uh, not to speak is because he doesn't have the authority under the law to represent another adult unless he's a lawyer or has power of an attorney. An email saying you can speak to him does not provide for that, and that's why we had to uh, deal with it that way. I understand, Mayor, your, your point on that, but from a risk management and from a liability and insurance perspective, it's not a due and owing debt, and that's where we're at on that. So I'll be happy to talk to each commissioner individually after. Um, but that's, and there's a long line of cases on that, as, as Mayor, I think you are aware now. So, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else want to talk? Good evening. My name is John Dietz. I live at 3077 Northwest 123rd Avenue in Coral Springs. I am also... Uh, an investor with Keller Williams Realty in Coral Springs um, and a real estate agent for Keller Williams Realty. So I want to start off by first of all disagreeing just a little bit that this is about real estate agents trying to earn a living because it's not. Actually, when I spoke a week ago, I believe it was, the, 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 the comments that I made were um, 100% about how this decision would affect the city of Coral Springs, how it would affect each of you, and how it would affect all of the residents of Coral Springs. So I just want to bring up a couple points. I promise that I'll stay under three minutes. I have six points that I'll go through quickly. And again, none of these have anything to do with the real estate agents making a living. This is 100% about how this affects the city of Coral Springs. So I just want you to consider what percentage of the city's budget comes from property taxes? Uh, when the real estate market is doing well, homes are selling and property taxes are stable or increasing. Because of the Save Our Homes Amendment and Homestead, a homeowner who has been in their home for 10 years or more 
is paying considerably lower property taxes than the new homeowner will pay after the home is reassessed. Therefore, every time a home is sold, the city is getting added revenue to their budget. This not only benefits City Hall, it increases the available revenue for our schools, police, fire department, city parks, youth sports, and on and on and on. During the real estate market crash of 2007 to 2011, South Florida was one of the hardest hit areas in the country. I would encourage city I would encourage the city to go back and look at your budget during 2007, 2011 and see how the real estate market crash affected your budget. During this time, more than 40% of homeowners were behind on their mortgage payments. When property owners are behind on their mortgage payments, they are not paying property taxes. How would a 40% decrease in property tax revenue impact our city? Also, more than 50% of home sales during this time were distressed sales with years of unpaid property taxes. According to NAR research, more than 10% of home sales happen through an open house. More than 10%. There are roughly 3,000 homes sold every month in Broward County. Without temporary directional signs, there will be no more sales due to open houses. That's 3,600 fewer real estate transactions every year directly impacting the city's budget. Now, I know that's super brief, and that is 100% again in effect to how this is going to affect City Hall. That's my three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dietz. Anybody else? Okay, and we're going to move on to the agenda. Uh, Mr. Hearn, we're going to go to Resolution 2018-024. And Mr. Hickey, I think you're going to, or somebody's going to talk. Yeah, Mayor, uh, just to, to uh, remind the public if they came in, uh, that Ordinance 2018-107 has been deferred to the date certain November 28th. Resolution 2018-24 is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs, Florida approving the Community Development Block Grant proposed fiscal year 2018-19 annual action plan, authorizing staff to transmit the annual action plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, providing for an effective date, this request to hold a public hearing, solicit input, uh, and adopt the annual action plan. Mr. Hickey has a presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Commission. Uh, tonight we're talking about the CDG, CDBG action plan. It's an annual plan that we do every year. This is actually the fourth out of the fifth year of the consolidated plan in order to receive entitlement from funds from CDBG. We're required to do an annual action plan as well as a five-year consolidated plan. Uh, each project has to meet one of these national objectives, a low mod income person, either slum or blight, or be for an urgent need after disaster. We always like to show this. This is the eligible area that we can expend funds in. Now this is just the area that is eligible. You can also, as we talked about, um, assist a low to moderate income person. So when we do home repair and those types of things, as long as they meet the criteria, they can be within the, uh, the entire city of Coral Springs as well. Uh, this is just a list of projects for next year. Uh, the first three, I'm sorry, the first, yes, the first three are actual sidewalk projects. And those are just to the south here. We're looking at um, a section and making those uh, pedestrian connections to match up with our uh, downtown pathway, 31st Court, all of those different areas. So we're making changes in, in one area. We're also doing traffic calming at, on Northwest 110th. Uh, that's just been redone. I don't know if folks have been out to look at that, but it's looking much better. Um, commercial facade program, we would have funding to do at least one project for next year. Uh, we also do home repair, and that's a portion of the funds. We also get um, state, heart, heart, state housing initiative partner uh, program funds. That's a state program as well as uh, home funds so that we combine those and have um, all of those funds for our program. Uh, the youth and senior programs we do every, every year as well. Um, those require, because it's a public service, public services cap, we can only spend 15%. So we try to max out that 15% with um, youth and senior. And our neighborhood partnership program grant, that's for um, projects for uh, HOAs or condos to come in and, and um, update their 
landscaping, signage, those things. We have money in our operating budget and community development, but we also use uh, block grant funds when we can. And playing an admin to help um, facilitate and administer the program. With that, we're just asking you to hold a public hearing, adopt the resolution 2018-024, and authorize staff to transmit this to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, these funds would be available uh, on October 1st. So this would be for the same fiscal year that we have uh, with the city funds. Any questions? I had a curiosity question. How yes. many applicants do you have typically on the senior program? Uh, we, I don't know if we have the stats for it this evening. We can definitely provide that for you. Two, 250? Nira Sankar, who's our, who's our uh, CDBG person, uh, 250. Thank you. Open up to the public. Any public comment? I do have a question. Why are planning and administration so high? Yeah. We're allowed to expend 20% of the funding. So we set aside 20%. That can be used for salaries. Um, we have to do advertisement, um, administration of the program, and our home repair. We actually have someone that assists with our home repair. They basically do the pre-qualifications, make sure they have all their information. That um, contract is actually through the administration of funds as well. So we can, and we can also use it for some operating funds for um, paper and, and those types of things. So we, do, other we do assist with salaries. That's, that's the main part of it. I hear any motions? Move to approve. I move by Vice Mayor Samaglia, second by Commissioner Carter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Moving on to uh, the next item, which would be a uh, special exception. Mr. Hickey, you're recognized again. And, and Mayor, the special exception is going to go with the conditional use, so if I could just read them real quick. Sure. Thank you. Um, special exception, Coral Springs Commerce <coughs> Center. Request to hold a quasi-judicial hearing, a public hearing to approve petition of Green for a special exception from sections 250606, required perimeter buffering adjacent to abutting properties. Uh, with the land development code relative to the buffering requirements adjacent to residential zone property and removal required native preserve area in the industrial research and development zoning district located at 4250 Coral Ridge Drive. Legally described as a portion of parcel A, Coral Springs Research and Development Electrical Park. Authorized city attorneys will have draft an order approving SE 1805 and adopt said order. And then, Mayor, the companion conditional use is to um, give conditional uh, use approval in accordance with section 2506563810 of the land development code to allow for large scale buildings under single ownership occupying a footprint greater than 100,000 square feet in the industrial research development zoning district located 4250 Coral Ridge Drive. Same legal description. Request to hold the, uh, the, the public hearing uh, and uh, authorize the order to be drafted and the quasis have been waived. Mr. Hickey will do the presentation. Okay, Mr. Hickey, you're recognized and then we'll have the public comment. Thank you again and as uh, Mr. Hearn had said, we are here tonight for conditional use. It's required because of the buildings being over 100,000 square feet. In addition, uh, there is a special exception for um, buffering requirements, and I'll go into that during the discussion. Uh, again, most people know where this is, but this is the old uh, Horberger site, which was formerly the Alliance Entertainment site. It's uh, just over 38 acres. Um, the uh, Exeter Development has purchased this property and they're planning on doing redevelopment. They're actually in the process now, if you've been by, they've actually taken uh, the front end of the building off. This, maybe this will show you. So what they're doing in that 195,000 square feet, that will be the remainder of the existing building that's there. They're um, adding uh, an additional three buildings and it will total out to just 570,000 square feet. This is going to be flex industrial space. Um, Exeter is building two buildings. Uh, it's the old Prologis site, which is also the old Rooms to Go site. Um, they're just finishing up there, so this will be the next um, step. So they are in the process of doing uh, the, the existing building. The uh, next two buildings would be the smaller building, the 102,000 square feet, which is on the north side, and the 78,000 square feet. Um, and then the final building would be 194,000. That would be probably a phase, phase three project at this point. This is a rendering uh, showing the, the new building. They've actually all already been through architectural review. That was back in March, I believe. And um, architectural review uh, liked the building and were, um, and were favorable recommendation for it as well. All of the buildings will look um, like that. They're gonna have the existing building look like this as well as the new buildings that are, that are constructed. 
Uh, we also will have to look at the criteria for conditional use when we, when we run through, and staff believes that the conditional use has been, the criteria for conditional use has been met. Uh, we'll talk about the special exception. Originally, there were actually three sections of the code that were, um, that were identified. I'll talk about the last two sections, but this first section I wanted to show you, and it's kind of hard to see, but on the, um, on the graphic, there's two uh, red lines there. Um, the code requires those uh, loading areas to be screened from, from view. Uh, we worked with the, with the um, petitioner to come up with a strategy um, to not put the, the fence material, it requires a, a wall or a fence, um, and not put it along the buffer because there are existing large trees that are there. Um, they require a 30 foot buffer, they have a 40 foot buffer there. So rather than um, take out trees and put the, put the actual structure there, they're actually putting a wall that's directly attached to each of those buildings. So the intent of the code is being met by what they're doing. It's just that they're, this, the code requires it to be at the, at the parcel line and not where they're proposing to do it. So that's what the special exception um, for that is for this evening. Um, when they originally applied for their um, special exception, the area that's circled in red, um, we were looking at tree protection. This is over by our fire training safety. And if you've been over there, it's a, it's a large area. It looks like a preserve. There's existing trees there. Um, at the time, they weren't, we didn't know what the calculations were as far as that, as well, how much they're going to actually retain on site. We actually worked with the petitioner and they worked with staff and we, um, they actually came back and we realized that they do no, do not no, long, they no longer need to um, require a special exception from that. They are meeting the code for the uh, tree protection and uh, land clearing portion of the code. Again, uh, they're asking for a criteria under the, um, the second criteria. Staff believes that they've, they've met the criteria for the special exception. So staff is recommending approval of the uh, special exception from 250606, required perimeter buffering adjacent to abutting properties with A and B as the conditions and authorize the attorneys the attorney's office to uh, draft an order and approve the order for SE 18-0005. Okay, does any members of the public want to speak? I have a question. Vice Mayor Smagley, you're recognized. Yeah, uh, have they discussed what type of tenants they're looking for right now? Uh, I know that there's an existing, half of the existing building, there is a tenant that's moving in, which is why they're moving on the, the existing building quickly. Um, uh, Dina is here. I'm not sure if they know what the tenant, who the tenant is at this point. What are, what are they looking for? What, what type of businesses are they looking for? It would be for whatever would be the industrial district, so it would probably be someone that does some sort of, um, sorry, I lost the, lost the feed. Um, they can do manufacturing. You know, those types of, any, anything that would be allowed within the uh, corporate park. But they, I know they have a large tenant for half of that building, so for about 90,000 90, square feet. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Quasi has been raised, waived. Good. So any motions? I'll move. Approve. All right, moved by Commissioner Daly, seconded by Commissioner Vignola. Special exception as well, Mr. Yeah. What we're going to do, we're going to do They're them separate. separately. Okay. So we're going to do the conditional, uh, or the special exception first. Uh, moved by Commissioner Daly, seconded by Commissioner Vignola. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Now moving on to the uh, conditional use. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Vignola, seconded by Commissioner Daly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, resolution 2018-023. Uh, Mr. Hearn, you're recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs, Florida, declaring Lot 7, Block C of the Glenwood Subdivision, according to the plat thereof, as recorded in Plat Book 69 at page 33 of the Public Records of Broward County, Florida, to be surplus property, authorizing the appropriate city officials to dispose of the property in accordance with the provisions of Section 2-311.2 of the City's Code of Ordinances, providing for an effective date, and this is a request to hold a public hearing, approve and adopt, that Mr. Salamone is here. Step to declare the property surplus that will allow staff to make follow through on the process to get it uh, sold and move back to its proper place in the neighborhood as a triplex development. 
Okay, any questions? Move to approve. Second. All right, moved by Commissioner Daly, seconded by Commissioner Carter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Does anybody want to take any of the consent agenda items out? Move consent. Moved by Commissioner Daly, I'll seconded second. by Vice Mayor Samaglia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Ordinance 2018-101. Mr. Hearn? Yes, sir. Let's get into it. It's an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs, Florida, creating Chapter 19 of the, of the code uh, entitled Emergency Management to provide for emergency management responsibilities, powers, and regulations, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. This is second reading. No public hearing. Request to approve. Adopt. Okay. Uh, Frank, I don't think you have to talk unless you want to say something. If you have any questions, Okay. Uh, Move to approve. Moved by Commissioner Daly. Seconded. Seconded by Vice Mayor Smaglia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Ordinance 2018-106, second reading on user fee exemptions. This is an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs, Florida, amending Section 3-8 of the Code of the City of Coral Springs entitled General Administrative Fees to provide a user fee exemption for municipal complex rental fees for the Coral Springs Regional Chamber of Commerce. Provided for conflict, provided for repealer, provided for codification, severability, and an effective date. <coughs> to approve and adopt on second reading. Move to approve. Moved by Commissioner Daly, seconded by Vice Mayor Samaglia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Uh, resolution 2018-025. The resolution of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs, Florida, authorizing a loan in the aggregate principal amount of not exceeding $10 million in the form of a non-revolving line of credit for the purpose of providing liquidity finances for the project described herein accepting the proposal of Iberia Bank to provide such loan to the city, making funds and determinations as to said loan, authorizing the issuance of a non-revolving credit note to evidence and secure the loan, covenanting to budget and appropriate from legally available non avalorum revenues as provided herein as a source of security and payment of the non-revolving credit note, authorizing the execution and delivery of such non-revolving credit note, approving the form of a line of credit agreement and authorizing the execution and delivery of such line of credit agreement, authorizing other required actions in connection therewith, providing severability of the invalid provisions and providing for an effective date request to approve. Impressive. <laughs> Ms. Moskowitz, congratulations on your new job. Yes. Um, is there anything you want to say? Thank you very much. No, this is just basically used to cover the costs of when we have a hurricane and we just want to have cash available. As you know, FEMA doesn't reimburse in a timely manner. So we want to be proactive and put this in place now. All right, so everybody understands we are not borrowing $10 million. This is right. a line of credit. Hopefully we will not get hit by a hurricane again this year, which depleted most of our reserves last year. And this is a good financial move to make sure we are sustainable. Uh, any motions? I'll move. Congratulations, Kim. So moved. Yeah. Hmm. All right, moved by Vice Mayor Samaglia, seconded by Commissioner Vignola. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Uh, next item, uh, Ms. Thomas, you're recognized. What you have in front of you are three uh, uh, applica applicants to fill three vacancies on the Architectural Review Committee. All three meet the requirements to sit on the committee. So you got three applicants and three spots, right? Right. Move to approve. Who is the liaison to the architectural? I am. So what's your? I am. I agree, Russ. Well, All right, then you move, so I'll second. All right, moved by Commissioner Carter, seconded by Vice Mayor Samaglia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Um, let's go start with Commissioner Carter. So um, I was thinking about what's, what's special about Coral Springs and, and what are we famous for? And, and that's kids and now it's going to be seniors because a lot of people are aging in place. And branding is a big deal. And, and capitalizing on your brand and what's in, you know what makes you who you are. And we've got so many good things going on in the city, sports related generally. And I was thinking that if we had one particular place or thing that um, we could capitalize on and become world famous for it or world known, which I kind of think we're already there. And I was thinking that in terms of the Aquatic Center and maybe possibly branding with a national brand, so like Nike or something like that, where, you know, helps get the word out about all the great things that go on at the Aquatic Center. 
and we would put a lot of money into it with the pool and the dive well. And I was just thinking that was maybe, I'm sure that's a workshop conversation, but branding's a big deal. So then I had a resident make an, an interesting suggestion. Um, I guess some people watch the fireworks from the top of the parking garage. That'd be a great vantage point. So then they suggested, how about have a movie night up there and charge a dollar a car or whatever, have some food trucks, like where we have the sips and bits, bits and sips, or whatever it is, bites and sips. But I thought that was a good idea, you know, like an inflatable screen like we do out at the um, Betty Stradling Park. I think that's where we do it, movie night. But it could be fun up there, having it in the parking garage. I just thought it was a good idea. So maybe that's workshop too. But So those were my ideas and suggestions. And um, my commissioner hours are next Monday, but I would like to reschedule them because I want to go to that CSID meeting as a resident. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Goodrum, if you could, those are two items we might want to put on a, uh, a workshop. Um, so when it's appropriate, let's do it. Vice Mayor Smaglia. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to start by, again, thanking the military for doing what they do so we can do what we do. And to salute our police and fire, both our chiefs are here tonight. Thanks, guys, all the work you do. Uh, i got to tell you a quick story. Sunday, I had to go over to Coconut Creek and my car does not have uh, GPS. I got lost, and I was driving around for about close to an hour, and I was over by the city can, can I tell you something before you get on? You got a phone from the city? It has GPS. Yeah, mine does too, but I don't use it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I saw a police officer sitting there, and he could not see my shirt, because I had it. It was a, an event, I had my commission shirt on. And I told him my story, he says, follow me. And he took me right to the house, right to the address. So when I got out of the car, I said, don't leave, I gotta talk to you. So I went over, then he realized when he saw my, my shirt that, that I was on a commission here. I said, you know, we pride ourselves on our police and fire, but you're right up there with him. What a nice man. So if you're listening tonight, buddy, thank you so much, you did a great job. Uh, my contact information, oh, by the way, Friday morning at nine o'clock, right out here by the icon, NBC6. We'll be having uh, uh, their, their, they're coming out to Happy. salute our 55th anniversary. And uh, uh, they'll be out here, and the Veterans Coalition will be coming out here. They're going to come out in force. So we're asking everybody to really come out and, and let's fill up the front yard here. And I can be contacted uh, the first Monday of every month, 3 to 5. My uh, cell is 954-801-2004. And uh, that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Vignola. I um, just want to thank Rick and his staff, along with Police and Fire Department, for everything for the 4th of July, dealing with the weather um, and making it go off as, as best as they could. And um, That's it. If anyone has anything they'd like to speak to me about, please call me on my cell phone at 954-632-7544. Commissioner Daly. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. If anybody needs anything, they can reach me on my cell phone at 954-778-3304. They can email me at ddaily at coralsprings.org, or they can find me on any of the social media outlets. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. All right. Uh, I just want to let everybody know, and I think it's appropriate, that uh, the Bloomberg Philanthropic Public Art Challenge, uh, City of Coral Springs was one of 30,000 applicants and I'm proud to tell our citizens uh, there are 14 they niddled it down to 14 and we are in the top 14 uh, so keep your fingers crossed we might be able to get a uh, grant from the Bloomberg Public Art Challenge um, we're actually partnering with Parkland what we're partnering with Parkland on this for healing art well that's Parkland's a nice place. I think we might want to annex them someday. Oh, she left. <laughs> Poor Frank. Sharon Barron left. She, she left. left. Uh, and uh, I also would like to say how proud we're going to be with the grand opening of the Cleveland Clinic facility tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a urgent care and surgery center, 73,000 square feet. Uh, they spent about $60 million on the, the facility, and I think it's going to be a great addition for the city of Coral Springs, and that's tomorrow night. 
at 6 o'clock if anybody wants to come. Uh, having said that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Goodrum so you can tell us some of your thoughts about your vacation. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to, I I'm not sure if we put out any press on this uh, yet, but uh, Chief Frank Babnick has been recognized as the uh, Fire Chief of the Year for the Southeast United States. So he was... It, it, you know, and you can take this for granted because he was recently named the, the Fire Chief of the Year for the state of Florida. Uh, and if there's one nationally, I have no doubt he'll win that. But I wanted to congratulate him in his department. He'll tell you, be the first to tell you it's, it's about the people in his department. I would also like to turn it over to Chief Babinick to provide an announcement. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate that and I appreciate all the support and, and, and everything that we get. Um, we just got notified that our medical director, Dr. Peter Antevi, was uh, uh, named the 2018 Medical Director of the Year for the country. Um, he was named by NAEMT, which is the National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians. So we just found that out. Um, he's a, a, a very uh, progressive and uh, great medical director. We're lucky to have him. And I'm sure we'll bring him before you for a formal recognition, but I wanted to let you guys know that, that we just got that notification and that is a, a tremendous achievement on his behalf. So I wanted to let you guys know that. Thank you. That's all, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Hearn. Report, sir. This meeting's adjourned. Mayor, I can, I can address Mr. Hearn, you can explain it. Yeah, I, I'll address it directly because the meeting yeah. is over and we yeah. can't continue under Florida law. But I'll talk to you about that. 